Good morning, everyone. Um, very welcome to this webinar um, to launch or relaunch our uh, revamped community of practice. Uh, my name is Sophia Ketib Grundy. I'm the deputy uh, coordinator of the Global Protection Cluster based in Geneva. Uh, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to this webinar this afternoon. Before we start, um, I will ask to everyone to please mute your, uh, yourself and take off also the video um, just to make it, uh, to lighten the bandwidth. I see a few of you uh, still unmuted. Um, so please do mute yourself um, as we start the, as we start for some other colleagues to join us. Uh, I see Doreen, you are not muted. I see Seleche, you have your video on. Um, as we have had some issues in terms of connectivity in the past, I just want to make sure that we have the right uh, setup to before we start. Thank you very much, Doreen. You're still unmuted, and I think otherwise everybody uh, has muted themselves. So a warm welcome to you all this afternoon. Uh, we're very happy uh, after several uh, weeks and months of uh, working on this new community of practice to be launching it together with you today. Um, Sorry, I'm just waiting for uh, everyone to mute. There's some background noise. Um, yes, uh, so I was just saying uh, we've been working for the last few weeks and months with Spigit to, uh, to, to prepare for this launch. So, so we're very happy to be, to be launching it today and uh, very happy to have some of you who have been uh, using this platform already for the last few years and the newcomers today uh, to, to, to um, a look at these new new tools and how we can uh, use it in the in the future. Um, just a quick uh, recap on on uh, on how we've uh, revamped this uh, community of practice. Um, we have had a bilateral consultation with our field cluster coordinators and other coordinators uh, and other actors. We have conducted a survey last uh, year to get a better sense of how we can improve that tools. And based on that, uh, Yasmin and our colleagues in Spigit have been working on on, uh, on uh, improving the tools, which will be presented later today. Um, it is meant, uh, of course, as a tool, as a practical tool to facilitate peer-to-peer -peer exchange, uh, really uh, allowing for a connection between uh, field pr practitioner, exchange of ideas and tools on, on, on practical issues, uh, and a space where we can actually take the time to have a, a dedicated uh, thinking process and, and, and dialogue on specific uh, issues. Uh, so we have other ways of communicating that we use. We have calls, we have the team channels, uh, but the community of practice is really seen for us as a, as a place, as a safe place where we can uh, take the time to engage on specific uh, topic and where we can bring uh, thematic specialists uh, if, if needed to help us uh, moderate and, and put into a, technical discussion. Today, the platform has had a total of 20, 22,000 users, so a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, experience and expertise around the table. And again, we are, we are happy to bring in uh, dedicated and specialized thematic expertise uh, to help um, uh, enrich some of the discussion um, that we will have in the next few months. I want to flag that the, the webinar will be recorded, uh, so we will post this on our website. Uh, so please know that it's been recorded. Um, and I will just now uh, uh, introduce you to the speakers. I'm just doing the, the welcome and the moderation. Um, and to help me welcome you, um, uh, I will call Catherine Starop, who is the head of the protection unit in the Danish Refugee Council. She will also do a five minutes uh, a welcome. Then Yasmin will be giving us uh, kind of an overview of the objective of the webinar, but also uh, a more in-depth description of the community of practice. Um, then Catherine will again uh, present us the PIM exchange space, which is a specific uh, a space in the community of practice uh, dedicated to, to PIM. And then uh, our colleague from Spigit, Phil Gillette, uh, will uh, walk us through uh, the tool itself, how to use it. And we'll have a, then a, a Q&A session at the end. So that's a bit the, the menu of this afternoon. And uh, without further ado, um, Catherine, if you want to come in um, to welcome our colleague, uh, please over to you, Catherine. 
Thank you so much, Sophia. And uh, I'm very happy to be on board for this afternoon's webinar and looking very much forward to, to, uh, to revamp and relaunch, if you like, the, the community of practice and all the many opportunities and uh, advantages we have of having such a, 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 a platform to exchange, to learn, to share. Uh, I will come back and, and speak more, as Sophia said, uh, to the specific uh, space on, on protection information management. So without further ado, I'll uh, hand over for us to proceed in the webinar. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, uh, Catherine. Did you want to the, the, give the floor to Yasmin? I didn't get uh, the end of your sentence. Over to you. Yes, I think over to Yasmin. Thanks, uh, Yasmin. So over to you. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Sophia and Catherine. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Yasmin, just for the newcomers, and I am based with the Global Protection Cluster, providing field support. Very happy to, to see uh, some of the old faces here and also welcome to our new colleagues who are joining for this um, webinar uh, about the relaunch of the platform. Uh, so I'd, I'd just like to say that I'm also uh, assisted by my colleague Evesi. Uh, and throughout the, the webinar, if you have any questions uh, as um, um, Please, please feel free to, to flag them in the chat box and we'll make sure that we uh, respond to them uh, by the end of, uh, of the session, towards the end of the session, towards uh, when the Q&A session starts. Okay, so back to the, the platform, as Sophia mentioned, uh, the community of practice really resulted from extensive cons consultations that we held with with the field a few years back and there was um, a clear need by uh, coordinators to have a space where they engage, um, share their experiences, ask questions as, as well as share uh, approaches that they're implementing in the field, uh, ideas that, that worked for them and ideas that didn't work. So it's, it's, it's an informal platform per se. It's not a platform where we really assess uh, what is the correct approach or what is the correct answer. It's a platform to help um, colleagues speak to each other, provide support to each other, as well as it, it, it allows the GPC um, and uh, our various partners as well uh, give the support needed, as well as be informed uh, by the challenges that you're flagging in the field. So there's a lot of um, uh, focus uh, on engagement. Uh, on making this platform uh, user friendly, easy, easy accessible to, to all of you. Uh, and uh, with the targets that uh, we need to also uh, identify good practices, uh, come up with um, uh, approaches that you uh, recommend scaling up, uh, and also to provide you with the support needed um, in the long run. And because, because of this need, the platform is really uh, uh, simple in the sense that it's... Yes. Please, can you please mute? <laughs> uh, it's, it's quite easy and um, the idea is for users to go in and to post a question or to post an idea or to request for resources. Uh, we can also form groups um, to work around specific projects or exchange uh, training material, for example, exchange strategies or policies or certain challenges that you would like your colleagues to provide you uh, with input on or even our global colleagues to be engaged uh, in supporting you with. Um, next slide, please. So uh, it's... The, the platform, as we will see soon, when uh, my colleague Phil from Sp uh, Spigot will do the virtual walk through with all of us to explain to us how the platform works. Um, it's really targeting uh, everyone with a focus, of course, on um, the idea when we established it was focusing on how to bring together a pool of protection cluster coordinators, co-coordinators, protection actors together in a platform where they can speak uh, about issues that they find uh, urgent or of a priority to them and that they can exchange their experiences over as well as um, seek advice from global colleagues 
and vice versa as well. We, we at the global level, we regularly reach out to you for advice and approaches and practices and success stories as well as challenges that you are facing. So uh, the platform is also open uh, to colleagues who are not necessarily working in the protection uh, sector, but also colleagues who are working in other clusters, for example, for uh, development actors. So it is open in, in that manner. Any uh, colleagues who would have an interest in joining our conversations or bringing on certain, um, uh, let's say, challenges that they're facing or certain good practices that uh, they would like to bring forth, they can, can definitely join us. I'm sorry, I can hear someone talking on the phone. <laughs> I can, I don't have... A, Please go ahead, uh, Yasmin. I think the, I'm trying to track the person who is uh, speaking of language. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, and of course, we've established uh, this, as I mentioned, uh, to share experiences with, with colleagues, as well as their uh, colleagues can, can reach out to each other. So uh, the platform is established in a manner that if, if, for example, colleagues in Libya would like to reach out to colleagues in Syria or in, uh, in Iraq, this, is, this, is, um, this would be feasible. So the idea is to also facilitate this conversation in a platform. Um, and uh, of course, um, we, uh, like I mentioned, the idea is also to identify good practices that can be scaled up. Uh, and for us to identify challenges or issues that you are facing at the field level that we can support you in addressing. And I, for some of you, we have launched in, in the past protection challenges. And the protection challenge that we launched in the past was about uh, remote, um, how to do uh, remote, uh, remote programming and how to deliver protection in inaccessible areas. Um, and, the, uh, and this was because it was identified by members of the platform as a priority and we were able to crowdsource ideas and practices and scale up some of them. So the idea is to continue also with, these, um, with this approach in, um, in solving challenges faced by the field. Without further ado, and I know because this, this session really we wanted to go through the new platform with you, focus on um, delivering to you um, how best to use the platform, I'd like to hand over to my colleague Phil, who will do uh, the... Uh, no, actually, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll hand over now to, um, to Catherine, who will speak to us about the PIM exchange space. Thanks a lot, Yasmin. And before we go through the platform, I just want to spend a, a few words on, on that specific space we call the PIM exchange space. So PIM uh, standing for Protection Information Management. And we are really, really happy that this can be a part of the, the broader GPC uh, community of practice because you can argue this is a thematic issue or area of work, uh, which uh, for all of us is very highly relevant. And this is uh, a way in which we can also make sure that we are sustaining all the learning and are able to better share and exchange on the work that we do that is so important on protection information management. The work that we embarked upon back in 2015 with the aim of strengthening our work for protection data and information, the management of this data, collaboration, the sharing, the coordination of the data and information to inform our protection analysis strategy and response. So making sure that our analysis strategy and subsequent response indeed reflects the actual needs on the ground in the specific context of the displaced people and displacement affected people. So why Catherine, is, yeah? Catherine, sorry to interview Sophia here. Just can you speak close to the mic? You you did you tend to disappear a bit sometimes. Thanks. Yes. Yes. Is it better now? Yeah, much better, thanks. Yeah, thank you. So, I mean, just like the GPC uh, community of practice, the whole idea and philosophy behind this PIM exchange space as a specific space under the GPC, that is indeed 
reflecting the importance of sustaining and documenting and providing these avenues for us to share. And we all know in our daily and in your daily uh, busy days and weeks in the field, it is not possible to, to write long reports and long emails necessarily. So having this open, informal, hopefully easy accessible platform to exchange experiences to post questions to mobilize other colleagues who know something about a specific issue. That's the very reason and raison d'etre behind also this PIM exchange space. So what it is, just like the GPC community of, space, uh, of, of practice, it is a space for knowledge, for exchange and for learning. Next, please, uh, page, please, All right. And who is for? It is, as Jasmine just said, it is for the GBC colleagues, but it's also, I mean, it's an open platform, so it's for everyone who works on these issues and uh, who are eager also to, to learn more and, and to do better. So it's a platform for all, of, for all of us, including also all the many colleagues we have worked with over the last few years in terms of trainings and capacity building on protection information management. So what we want to and wish to exchange, I mean, there are no limits in, in principle. We, in this specific PIM exchange space, we are exchanging on protection data and information issues, and they can be many different issues. So we are exchanging around those issues, we are challenges, learnings. We are changing around the PIM conceptual framework that we have developed over the years, which comprise the definitions, the terminology, the principles, process the different protection information management systems that we work with on a daily basis, be it population data, protection monitoring, case management, protection needs assessment, and so forth. So similar to the community of practice, the larger one that we will see in a moment, there are different ways in which you can engage on the platform and this PIM exchange space. You can post questions and you can also upload and, and share your, uh, your experiences and your learnings. And in this way, we're really hoping to further mobilize and advance the sharing of all the good practices and how we together can address the challenges. We have at this point in time put on the PIM exchange space a couple of the PIM uh, conceptual framework key documents, including our strategic framework, so you can see what are the priorities in coming years, some of the e-learning, some of the podcasts and so forth. But all the rest of it, you will be able to find on the website, dedicated PIM website, you can see in the right bottom go, uh, uh, down uh, further, yeah, the corner in, in down the, at the right. So there is a, a website where you can find all the PIM documents. There already. I can already see there are a couple of questions also, which makes us very happy. So we we are ready to engage with all of you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, uh, Catherine. Uh, so I suggest we take the question uh, in a bit of uh, time. I, I, I hand over to Phil, uh, Phil Gillette, for a presentation of the, the tool itself. Over to you, Phil. Yeah, thank you. Hello, everyone. Nice to meet you. I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen. Hopefully everybody should be able to see my screen. Now you should just see Google. Yes, we do. Oh, great. So what I'm going to take you through today, I'm going to take you through one, how we can access the platform. Then two, once we're in the platform, how we find uh, the GPC exchange space and how we find the PIM exchange space, how we post questions, how we view some of the questions and how we respond to those questions. So over there, I'll take you through everything. And, and as we said earlier, if there's any questions, please feel free to put them in the, the chat and uh, we'll, we'll respond to them at the end. Also, just on that, um, it was noted at the start of the call, this will be recorded. So if you do miss anything and want to catch up, you can watch this again. And also, you will be getting a how to use guide. There will be a very simple uh, document that will be shared with you on some of the key points that I'm going to take you through today. So please don't be too concerned. If you do just miss something, you will have these uh, resources available to you after the call. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to use the link 
which is gpc.spigot.com. And once I click on this link, it's going to take me to the sign in page. OK, so what you can see here, it's, it's asking for a username and password. Now, it is good to know at this point that the GPC platform has been in existence for a while. And as noted, it was a relaunch. And there was also a different um, angle to the platform in UNHCR ideas. That means if you have used UNHCR ideas or GPC um, or the PIM space previously, then you may already have an account. So just to bear that in mind that you can register and by registering, you click here where it says register here and it will go through the whole first name, last name and username. Once you complete this form, your account will be created. But if when you click submit, it says you already have an account, it may be because you have used one of the spaces previously. So if that is the case, please just click forgotten your username, put in your email address and it will send you your username. Once you've got your username, you can then, if you do not know your password, click forgotten your password and put in your username and it would send you that. So you can get both pieces of information. I would just clarify that you've created this yourself. So therefore, don't um, the username could be anything. It is not necessarily your email. It is what you set it up as as the start. OK, and as it says below, if there's any questions, you've got any trouble uh, registering, email gpc at unhcr.org and they will be able to direct you and, uh, and we'll find out why you cannot get access. OK, so that's that's the registering um, and forgetting your details. So if you've got details, username and password, you come in here. If you've not, then click on register here and it will take you to that register page that I showed you a moment ago. So I've got login details, so I'm going to log in. My username I set up as my own name. And I'm going to put in my password. OK, so when I click sign in, this is the page that I land on. OK, this is the page that you will land on and, and where you can find the, um, the exchange space and the PIM space. So to start with, I'm just going to talk you around this page. Wherever you are on the platform, this logo in the left hand corner will bring you back to this page. So you're, if you ever just want to come back here, look for the logo, click on it, it is always going to be in the top left hand corner. You have a go to. So if you're in the exchange space and you want to quickly go into the PIM space, you can click the go to and you can go to it very quickly and easily. Or again, you could come back to the home, which is the GPC community. You have an inbox. Let's say, for example, you've put a question in and somebody comments and, and gives you an answer, um, you would get a notification in the platform. You would also get a notification to your email as well. So don't worry, you're not going to miss something. If somebody comments, you will also get an email. People can use a direct message on here if they want to ask you something specific to your question as well, but they don't want anybody else to see it. So that would come into the inbox area. You have a search. So, for example, there's a particular question that you're looking for or you're not sure where you saw it and you want to look back. You can use the search. Searching will allow you to search for a particular user or a particular question right across the platform. That's in both the exchange space and the PIM space. OK, as you can see, I've added my picture here. It's always nice just to to, to add your photo to your profile just to give it um, uh, the, the nice look to it and also know who you're talking to. And for that, I clicked into my profile and I uploaded my image. So you do have a profile area. As you can see, I've got my name, email address and further detail that I may have put in on the registration itself. Okay. So I'm just going to come back and come to my home again. If you want some more detail, there is an about page. You can see all about the GPC and find out lots more information if you want to read it. If I scroll down now, you can see I've got two options. Um, Catherine spoke a moment ago about the PIM space. I'm going to come on to that. I'm going to show you it. the two spaces, the exchange space and the PIM space are very, very similar in terms of I'm going to go through the exchange space and show you everything. Um, and then when we move into the PIM space, we'll see that um, the information and the questions and the detail may be different. But the actual posting a question and commenting um, is, is very similar. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go and move into the, the post question. So I'm now in the GPC exchange space. 
So you can see that I've got a welcome message. I could learn more if I want. If I click here, it's going to take me to the About tab where I've got much more information about what the Exchange space is. I can see how many questions there are. Um, I can see comments that I've had on those questions, votes. They're, they're asking me if I've got a question and I'm and, and welcoming me to the platform. So if I wanted to, I can begin to put my question straight in here. I can also see questions that I've not yet rated before. So for example, if I, if I like the sound of that question, I wanna give that a, a vote, I can just click vote on it. This will show me um, questions I've not yet voted. So if I do vote, it would not show in this view. I can just click show all questions. So this is the, the main home of the exchange space. As I say, I can click here to see more. I can go into the about. I could read the overview in more detail. How about now if I want to post my question? So I'm posting in the exchange space. As you can see, wherever I am, I'm always going to see that I'm in the exchange space. So if you want to post in the PIM space, you would go into the PIM space and post your question there. If you want to post into the exchange space, then you would know where you are because you will have this on every page. So give your question or share your ideas and experiences. So what question do I have? I have a specific question about keeping everyone connected. I can then choose custom image gallery. So I'm, I'm gonna choose from this gallery that is here, um, and I, I prefer this. Sorry, is there somebody trying to talk or is somebody unmuted? Hi, can I ask, uh, I think it's, uh, who is Ibrahim? Yeah, Ibrahim, can you, yeah, can you please mute, thank you. Thank you. So I can choose my image just for my, uh, my question. Um, I can then choose a category that it falls under. So what, what's this around policy guidance or maybe, maybe I just choose other for this one because I'm not sure where it re really fits at this moment, but you will likely know which one of these in your organization it fits into. Priority, so is it high, medium or low? Well, I'm just asking a question here. I'd just like to know more about what people are doing to keep connected. I can tell people where I'm based. So I'm based in Europe overview so um maybe i'm looking to see how everyone's keeping connected during this time now the key thing to note here is everywhere you see an asterisk at the end of the question that is a mandatory question that means in order for you to submit your question you need to complete it you can see that i am based in is not mandatory so you don't have to complete that but overview of the situation, what type of advice do you need, asterisk there. So I need to complete this. So at the moment, I'm going to say, I'm not too sure at the moment. Okay, so I've completed it um, and because it is a mandatory, mandatory question. I can add attachments. So you can see add files. It will look into my own directory and I can add a file. Simply as clicking on the file and uploading. Tags. So just again, as you can see, there's no asterisk at the end of the tags. That means it's not mandatory. Tags, similar to hashtags that you may see on uh, social media and in other places, this is a way of tagging your idea against something. So maybe it's a particular uh, area of the business or a particular account that you're referring to and you'd like to tag that in. That way, all those ideas will be, will be tagged together. So please don't worry too much if you don't want to complete it was combining some of these questions together. I have the ability to publish this now. I could save it as a draft. So let's just say you, you put something in quickly. And I think as we talked about earlier in the call, you may not have time to sit there and write everything out, but you just had something at the, the, the top of your mind that you wanted to write down quickly. You can write it in and then save it as a draft. Importantly, you can save it as a draft, even if you've not completed some of the mandatory questions yet. So for example, if you're not sure on what type of advice or support you want to get, um, so you write your question and you think, actually, um, I, I don't know that yet. I'm gonna save it as a draft and I'm going to go and find out first. You can do that. So please, when you're putting it in, don't don't worry, you can, you can save as draft and you won't lose anything you've put in. I can cancel and just, leave it all together if I've come into the page by mistake. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to publish this now. 
thanks for posting. I can share it to, if I want to. Uh, I can add people to it if there, there's team, if there's people on the platform that I think might be might really be able to enhance my question and maybe able to give some feedback. I can add people to as team members, or I can I could post another question if I've got multiple. Um, but share is a good one if you want to ask a few people. If you know who you kind of want to ask, maybe share it with them, uh, and you can do that via the platform. As you can see, I'm now in my question. All of the answers that I, I gave were here. You can see people can uh, begin to comment. Because this is my question, I'm, I'm going to go into one that's already been asked. So let's have a look. So all I've done here is come into view all conversations. As you can see, I've, I've several ways to sort it, when it was posted, when it was modified and comments that are on there. I can see it in a different view if I would like. This is always a, a good view just to get the good spread. I can see that here's my um, question that I just posted. You can see that Yasmin's added, uh, asked a question here and I could maybe click into this and, and, and maybe read some more. So how to ensure a COVID response has a protection and human right lens. I can see that Yasmin's actually added um, an attachment here. So you can see that she's just added it when, when, when she's done the idea. Oh, sorry, the question. You can see the priority uh, where, where, she's, where she's based or where this applies to. I can see actually that Yasmin's added a team member here in Mohammed comments. So you can see that there's been multiple comments and the good thing that Yasmin's done here, she, she's put links in a comment. So this links through to elsewhere. It might be on, on the website or elsewhere that you, you want people to check out. So Yasmin's really built out with, with more information here. So for example, I could reply to Yasmin directly. I could say my response is in response to Yasmin's question or I could say, no, I don't want to join the conversation. I have a, I have a completely new co um, comment that I want to make. And as you can see, I can add links just like um, Yasmin has. I could say, what's my, what's my link? The other good thing is, for example, I could add mention someone. So I could say that I want to contact Adam, for example. That would notify Adam that I, I, I have, um, I have at mentioned him. So in that notifications that I showed you in the inbox, and that would give him a notification. So you can add mention people again, similar to you might have seen on other other platforms or social media where you can add mention individuals. Okay. And as as I say, links. That's also how you how you can um, add further information or maybe a document. You can add it into here, maybe as a link if that if that's useful. You can always don't feel that just because you've submitted your question, you can add to it. You can add to your question or, or your idea at any time. If I go back into it, I can edit it. I can also click into attachments and click add files. So don't feel that once you've submitted it, that's it finalized. You can always edit it, add more information because that's the best thing about it. OK, so say you put your question in and then somebody puts a comment and you think, that's made me think of something else. I want to update my, my, my idea or my question now with that further information. You can edit it, you can add that further information and really build that out. So it really becomes helpful to everybody. Okay. So we've gone through the, the posting of a question. We've gone through the, the viewing and the answering of the questions or the viewing of the ideas. We've gone through the app mentions, adding the links to, to the questions. As I say, we can, we can now go back to the home. So we're back on the landing page. It's all good, good to know that the, the search in the top right that I mentioned earlier, um, you can search for questions. You can search for users. So if there's a particular person that you want to contact and, and see what they are saying and, and learn more, then I'll speak to them directly. You can search for users within here. So I've gone into the exchange space and we, we've seen how we post and how we view things. I'm just going to go into the PIM space. And what you'll see is, again, fairly similar to the exchange space in how it's formatted. I've got more information on the home page here and I can scroll down. I can again see how many questions. And again, it's asking for me, me, me for my question. And just on this, if I was to put my, my title here, so let's just say I use the same one here just to kind of show you for demonstration purposes. When I press continue, it will take me into the post page. Okay, so please don't, uh, 
shouldn't be concerned or, or worried about putting in that first place. It's just going to bring you to this same place that we were, we were on the exchange, on the GPC exchange. And as you can see, as a reminder, you always know where you are posting to because it says PIM exchange space. OK, so I know this time my, my question is going into the PIM exchange space. I can also view all conversations within the PIM exchange space and I can see there's multiple. Same format, I'm still able to vote. I can still click into them. I can read more information. Attachments and comments work exactly the same. There's also a, an additional piece of functionality that I didn't highlight to you on the on the GPC, but it is there and it's here on the, the PIM space as well. And that's follow. So I could follow this comment. So if I want to be updated every time somebody comes back on this comment and it's something I'm really interested in, click the follow button and you'll be kept up to date. Alternatively, you might want to follow the user. So you can click on the user and you can click on follow. That will update you every time that user posts something. So say there's an individual that you, you'd really like to know or work better with. They're in a different camp and you want to learn from them and you want to see what they're posting. Then you feel free to follow them and you'll be kept up to date. So as I say, that the, the PIM space, really similar in its setup. I can find out more in the on the PIM background and what Catherine took, took us through a moment ago before I started this. So you can learn more here. And as I say, there's a back to home, or if I click the logo like we discussed, I'm back at this main page. So all that from a high level is, is everything that we wanted to take you through today in terms of a demonstration. We've covered logging in and the registration. We've then gone through to how I get into the exchange space and how I get into the PIM space. From there, you've seen how I can post a question, how I can comment back and at mentions in question, uh, along with keeping up to date by following and sharing, as well as adding links and attachment to, to any of your questions. So really, hopefully that, that helps everybody to see how simple the platform needs to use and how quick and simple it can be when you're out there in the field. Uh, you not feel like it's going to take a long time to get to the information you need. As I say, we will be sharing a how to use guide and this recording will be available to every, anybody and everybody. So um, you will be able to look back on it. Um, but we are now opening up for any questions or people want to know more. Please let us know. Thanks a lot, Phil. Lots of information. And I guess uh, once we start using it, um, it gets actually easier and easier every time. We've got uh, two questions in the chat box. Um, the first one, how can I find users on the platform? And second question, is there a possibility to form groups on the exchange space? So over to you, Phil, and I invite everyone to, uh, to post any other question you may have for Phil. Over to you, Phil. Yeah, no problem. So let me share my screen again. So um, just remind me on oh, the, the first question was the searching for the user. So, uh, for example, if I come into the search at the top and I type Yasmin, and I press the search button. Now it's going to search straight away here for the ideas, but I want to say users. So now I can see all the users that are Yasmin. So I can click on Yasmin, for example, here. And then if I wanted to, I could message Yasmin or I could follow Yasmin. So going back to what I spoke a moment ago, I could follow her to see updates of when she posts certain, certain questions and comments, for example. So that's how I search for a user. I literally just type their name into the search bar at the top and then change it to users. So my search is for a user. The second question, um, I think really was around forming a team and, and getting a group together. Now, you, you could use the team member functionality for that. So, for example, if Yasmin had put this question in and she wanted to build a team and it wasn't just Yasmin. So let's just say Yasmin puts this question in or puts this idea in and says, this is not just for, from me, this is from my team. Then what she could do is she could come into here and as you can see, she's already added Mohammed. And I can actually ask to join. I can be joining this team. So I could say, oh, I'm going to join this team, too. What Yasmin can do, or let's say I could do, I'm going to come into my question and I'm going to say, I'm going to add a team member. So what's their username? So you know what? I'm going to say, Yasmin, I want you to be a team member. So a message gets sent to Yasmin. 
And Yasmin is now going to be a team member on, on my question. So you could build a team around a particular conversation topic, an idea or, or, or particular question, and you can add multiple. So that's how you would do it. So one person would input the, the particular question and then you can build a team around it. I think that hopefully answers the question, but if it's not, please ask, um, ask further and I can, uh, I can try to clarify. Thanks a lot, Phil. Um, we've got the second set of questions. Yeah. Um, I think that's more towards uh, Yasmin. Regarding authority or accuracy of information, the space will have moderators from the GPC who can weigh in and confirm if advice is accurate or correct. So that's the first question. And the second, and does a vote on an existing question mean that you liked or endorsed a question so it can indicate popularity of an issue? Two questions, I think over to you, Yasmin. Thanks, Sophia. Um, for the first question, absolutely, yes, we have, uh, of course, a group of moderators from the GPC. We have um, uh, also moderators from the PEM exchange um, space, and they are experts on the topic. So the platform will be definitely monitored, and uh, we ensure that the information or the advice that is uh, provided is actually in line with um, with our policies and standards. Uh, so this is um, uh, this is of course a top priority, and for that reason, the uh, the notifications that Phil was speaking about and how moderators also will um, will be notified as soon as any activity takes place on the platform. It's it is a way to respond as fast and as as, um, as quick as possible to the requests coming from the field, but it's also to monitor the information flow and the advice given. Uh, with respect to the votes, indeed, yes, it, it flags to us. Uh, it's one way to flag to us the popularity of the issue, the need um, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, when I was speaking about how it's it's a platform for us, for colleagues, uh, to provide peer-to-peer -peer support, to exchange ideas, um, especially in these times when when we are faced with an emergency like COVID, we have been we have seen that colleagues across operations are reaching out to to each other to to get advice, uh, to share tools, to share approaches. So yes, the voting is one way, but also the 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 platform is equipped with other monitoring tools that allow us also to give us an indication of popular themes popular topics uh popular engagement around specific themes and phil would you like to comment on on that since uh, you also assist us with with the generation of the various dashboards in terms of uh, gauging the the level of engagement on popularity of themes yeah, um, I think there's a, like you say, I mean, there's, there's a combination of things. So from a, from a dashboard and, and reporting and kind of some analytics we can look at, we can see by, um, by question or by idea that the number of votes that uh, a question or idea has got, the number of comments, the number of replies to comments, for example. So if we're really seeing uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of detail around, um, around a particular question then that will really help the team to really look into it and say people are really getting behind of this maybe this is something we need to look into further so the, the use of the platform and around particular um, questions or comments or ideas um, will really help the team as well as on top of comments and ideas maybe team members we're able to see how many team members that a particular question has got so if we we've got a lot of team members and people are really highlighting this as something that needs to be looked into then it will, will really help the team on that side of things Perfect, loud and clear. Thanks, uh, Phil and Yasmin. Two, two other questions. Uh, is there a specific uh, browser to use uh, to access the platform? That's the first one, I think, for you, Phil. Yep. And I think uh, there's another one. What's the difference between the two spaces uh, that I will direct to Catherine, uh, to you, Catherine? Over to you, Phil. Yeah, no problem. In terms of browser, no is the answer. Um, you can access uh, the Spigot platform and GPC, PIM Exchange Space on any browser um, that, that you choose, whether that be, uh, and we, we always say that the main ones, the ones that uh, are big and, and supported, Google Chrome, uh, Internet Explorer, um, and Safari, for example, are, are, are on Apple devices, they are all supported and you will not have any issues. You can also access on your mobile device, so that was one thing 
thing I did not mention. Uh, you can access it on your mobile device. Again, similar to how you would access on your desktop. There is no uh, separate application at this moment in time. Um, you would just go to your browser. So for example, if you have an iPhone, just go to Safari, go to the same link that I did, gpc.spigot.com, and log in that you normally would. Okay, you will see a, a more mobile friendly version, so it may not look exactly like it does now, but you would see the exchange space and you would see um, the, G, uh, the PIM space, so you would be able to access both and post questions, so it's accessible on a, on a phone from the browser. Thanks Phil. Catherine, over to you for the second question. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, the difference is that the the PIM exchange um, space is a sub page or sub platform, if you like. It's a thematic, zooming in on a specific thematic around protection information management. But as I said earlier, I mean, it's completely mirroring the GBC, the larger GBC community of practice. It has exactly the same way of engaging, the same functionality, the, the same way of, I mean, you can post questions, you can exchange and so forth. So it's exactly the same way you engage. So I would say by all means, please do not hesitate if you're in doubt about, you know, does this question or this uh, dialogue exchange, does it fit under one or the other? Just post it, please, by all means. And we have uh, built in some linkages. So if there are questions around specific areas that also come under protection information management, there is a linkage with my limited technology uh, insights, but that's how I understood it, Phil. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but it will come up on the PIM exchange side as well. And in this way, we can, we can make sure that we will be part and we will be able to monitor those exchanges anyhow. So just, I mean, my key message is, please don't hesitate, post your question. Whether it goes one or the other place doesn't really matter because we will be able to pick it up anyway. But it, it's just a, a thematic sort of space on protection information management. Thanks a lot, Catherine. Um, one more question. Can we search for good practice and are good practices catalogued or kept in a certain place in community of space? Uh, Yasmin or Phil, over to you. Um, sorry, I'll... I'll, I'll answer that and I'll give the, the floor to Phil if he wants to compliment. Uh, indeed, I, I also wanted to reiterate what Catherine mentioned, um, that the PIM space is, is very much uh, link, uh, interlinked to the exchange space. Um, and Phil, if you can help us by just visiting the PIM space very quickly, if possible, to show how the interlinkages are built to the uh, built in for the group. So, um, if you can please go to learn more. Uh, yes, and scroll down. So for example, these are cross-cutting issues. So they're both on the PIM. Uh, they're of course PIM themes, but also they come up very regularly on the exchange space. So we made sure that these interlinkages are built in and to, uh, to allow for your uh, for you to uh, not think too much when you post a, f a question of where to post it. So automatically, once you post a question that speaks about analysis, monitoring or information management in general, it will also automatically show on the, um, the PIM exchange space. So this is just to reiterate what, what Catherine uh, just mentioned. With respect to your question regarding uh, whether there is um, a way to um, search for good practices and are good practices catalogued or kept in a certain place. Uh, indeed, in the past, we used to issue, uh, of course, a newsletter or I don't want to say a newsletter, but um, uh, a publication basically on the good tools and practices that have been uh, shared uh, by field colleagues. Uh, also, these tools and practices by default will go on the GPC website and we will, uh, we would in the past direct you to them and we will continue to do this now after the, um, after today's launch. So you will be receiving these updates from us on a regular basis. Uh, we also, as I mentioned in the past, we have uh, launched a protection challenge on a specific challenge that was identified by the majority of our colleagues. So these ideas that were crowdsourced are also documented uh, and are shared uh, with the field. 
and uh, and of course all of these tools and practices uh, again once they are considered good practice and once once they are considered um, uh, approved also by the GPC they they go as I mentioned on the website and promoted as such I see two more questions um, is there a subsection on learning training or can one categorize an entry as learning training specific? Um, there is, I mean, currently as, as the structure of, uh, of the exchange space, as we went through it, there is no subsection specifically on learning or training, but uh, a thread on learning or training can be created. Uh, in the past, um, uh, some of the lessons learned in the past is that we have created many pages, um, thematic pages, and that created a lot of confusion for users and they found it very difficult to navigate. So the idea of this uh, revamping is to simplify the platform and make it more user friendly. So definitely we can have a subsection on learning and training once uh, for example, if, if there is um, an entity on learning that is um, interested in being part of this platform, we can definitely accommodate for that and include it um, in, in the new revamped uh, process. So this is one thing. Uh, and then another another idea is if there is if it's a regular discussion on on learning or training, then there is the option of of creating a thread on that. Uh, where all learning material or, or learning announcements can be included in that thread. Thanks a lot, Yasmin. We are approaching the end of the webinar. So if you have any more questions, it's the last chance now to put it in the chat box. I have one question for you. If you want, if I wanted to uh, organize like a more confidential uh, discussion with colleagues on maybe more confidential issues, uh, is there a way to allow that? Um, over to you, Phil and Yasmin. Um, so from a platform perspective, at the moment, uh, the way that the space, uh, the exchange space and the PIM space have been set up and structured uh, is that it, it's meant to be accessible for all and everybody can see the comments and it's meant to be a space for collaboration is the way that it's set up. If there is a further need for a, a more uh, anonymous and, and private space, uh, then that would be something that you could talk to the, 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 the team about, Yasmin and, and everyone. But at the moment, in terms of what you have now, this is meant to be a, a transparent and collaborative workspace for everybody to to come together thanks a lot Phil loud and clear um, I don't see any more comments or question in the chat box uh, I don't know if uh, Catherine there, was, there yes? was one question Sophia sorry there was a question Phil about whether there's a possibility to create a group on the platform uh, where they can collaborate around a certain idea or project. Yes, I think that was the, the first question and where I showed the team members, but I did want to clarify, did that answer the question around grouping? Is that what they were looking for when I was saying you can build a team around a particular idea or question uh, and everybody collaborate on that one? Um, so. I hope that get that that um, answered the question. But if not, they were looking for something different. Then please let me know, and I can try and clarify or explain. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't see anything else. Catherine, did you want to add anything? Thank you very much, and thanks for also this walkthrough, Phil. Very very helpful, and I'm so looking forward to the the further exchanges on these platforms. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Catherine, and uh, also want to thank you, Philippe and Yasmin and Catherine, for the, all the work and the preparatory work done to, uh, to to relaunch and revamp this this platform. Of course, the quality of the exchange is really uh, depends on the quality of the participant, the active involvement of, of all of you. So we really uh, would like to en encourage all of you to to participate. Um, and again, it's an opportunity for you to also share with us uh, and bring to the attention of the cluster uh, best practices documents uh, or information that you have come across that you think uh, warrants further either attention, discussion or more visibility. And uh, please do use this platform as well to, to flag this to us and we can uh, select some of these, these tools to put it on, to put on our, on our website or uh, to share through our uh, operational updates. 
I think that's all from uh, my side. Thank you very much, everyone, um, and have a very nice uh, long weekend. Looking forward to seeing you and discussing with you on this platform. Have a nice weekend. Bye.